Hey, West! Are you understanding any of this? <sighs> Could you just write it down? I think I missed something in the middle. You ass. Before I get into my review on the new Dead Rising 4 DLC known as Frank Rising, I wanted to give some shoutouts. First of all, I am ecstatic over how quickly my analysis of Dead Rising 4 reached 2,000 views. While this may not be a big deal to some people, I couldn't be more grateful right now. I worked really hard on making that video with only passion driving me. I'm incredibly satisfied with the finished product and so happy to receive all the feedback I got from it. I'd like to give a special shout out to Rely on Horror for posting an article about me and my video. A little surreal reading about myself on a random website, thank you so much for that. Check out the site in the description below. I'd also like to thank Fungo for helping me get the word out there through social media as well as streaming with me. If you're a fan of Silent Hill, Resident Evil, Dark Souls, or Bloodborne, I highly recommend you check out his channel. He's very informative, analytical, funny, and his presentation is superb. Last but not least, I want to thank all of my subscribers old and new. It really means so much to me that you're watching my videos and enjoy my content. Now with all that taken care of, let's get right into it. Dead Rising 4 receives its first story-based DLC chapter, five months after the initial launch. Frank Rising. Clever. Before that, there was the Stocking Stuffer DLC, which was nothing more but a motorcycle, reskinned weapons, and all the zombies dressed as elves. Five dollars, please! They also added multiple difficulties to choose from, probably from the fact that so many people complained that the game was pathetically easy from beginning to end. Let me just say that alone makes me happy. Not everyone likes being coddled in video games, treated like a child, but prefer that a game provides something that makes you put your skills to the test. That the game wants you to learn, grow, get to know it so that it can be a satisfying beast to defeat. People welcome the new difficulty settings since it does make you play a little more carefully and that it added something new to the table. But I think it's complete paltry. All it does is tweak numbers in the coding. You take more damage from everything. Weapon durability is lower, health ups are more minimal, etc. This doesn't really provide more fair challenge, it just makes scenarios more irritating and drawn out. How about next time you folks at Capcom Vancouver decide to make a challenging game from day one? I think the only time difficulty settings are worth a single damn is if it means a different experience with the world. Best example is if the enemy AI act differently. Others would be item placement and enemy spawns changing. I guess what I'm trying to say is Resident Evil 7 did a much better job with how they designed the difficulty settings. They also managed to release a handful of updates with the intention to fix issues with the game's performance. Two of these updates also came with free cosmetic content. The Valentine's Day DLC. Can't really stand to look at this for more than a few minutes. I mean, sure, it's free, but should I really force a smile when I'm handed shit? Just because it's free? I'd rather they take the time to work on bug fixes than horrendous cosmetics. Also some Street Fighter costumes. Whatever. I can at least be grateful that the patches certainly help stability and performance issues. Well, somewhat. The game is still a glitchy mess which will probably never be remedied, but at least I can keep a somewhat more consistent frame rate. Now onto the main event, Frank Rising, revealed by Capcom mere weeks before its launch onto Windows 10. I mean, what can I really say, besides the idea of seeing Frank West, a character once known and loved, shambling and zombified is kinda poetic. Eh, I'm not clever enough to go beyond that. So let's see the gameplay. You know how Dead Rising was always known for letting you use so many items throughout the world, how whatever you can pick up is a weapon? Obviously an exaggerated headline, but it wasn't that far from the truth in most of the games. Yeah, in this you can't use jack shit. You're left to your own wits and abilities. I'd complain that they didn't bother adding any new items or weapons, but what was I or anyone to expect? i give them some credit for trying something different, but is this new take at least fun? More on that later. The campaign itself is also under an overall timer. See guys, that wasn't so hard was it? Granted it's only for an hour and a half, but it's a start. Frank's ability as a zombo are such. Swiping like a madman. This helps you build a combo and the execution move is to chomp on your enemy's neck to gain health. This automatically kills the victim of the execution, but it can't be performed against bigger enemies. There's the leap attack. You lunge yourself onto an enemy for heavier damage, similar to the hunter from Left 4 Dead, but not as easy to use. For one thing, you can only do it when it's aiming at an enemy. There's acid barf, basically its namesake, the only way to attack a downed enemy. And finally, the scream. It can separate hordes like the mighty Noah. Yeah, that's who it was that did that thing, right? There's trials across the map that need you to complete particular tasks under their own separate timers. There's also collectibles unique to this campaign, and you need to collect them all to get the story's best ending. And that's the gameplay. Now let's take a look at the story. Trust me, this will be quick. 
Taking place directly after the end of Dead Rising 4, we see Frank West getting chomped up for a bit and then rise from the dead. Yeah, he's a zombie now. But you'll see later that he still has his mind intact. After killing some hostile survivors, he gets gunned down by Hammond. She and Blackburn take him back to a safe house. But Frank is gone. No. No! My treatment is working. He's exhibiting numerous human qualities. Response to light, voice, heat, talking in his sleep. God, Hammond, just look at him! Frank figures he got infected in a manner similar to Calder because he experienced a bit of Barnaby's machine during the main campaign. He is desperate for a cure, and Blackburn wants to help him out, but she needs him to run out and get supplies. Sound familiar? Despite Frank being a zombie, he still gets attacked by all the remaining hordes and even Evo zombies. Well, that's no fun. Ugh! Why are these zombies giving me shit? Hmm. They must think you're human now. Fascinating. Why? Great! Now everyone wants to kill me! That wasn't really an explanation. While Frank is running errands, Blackburn is trying to convince him that if he provides enough samplings, she can finish the research Barnaby started. Frank isn't having any of it, though. West, I am almost certain that you are the zombie that Barnaby tried to create. Disease immune, intelligent, non-aging, perfect. If I could just get a sample of your blood... Nuh-uh. I'm not gonna be anyone's lab rat. We're curing me, remember? Really? Not even a, a little blood? Come on, dude. Anyway, it turns out Blackburn betrays you and tries to get Hammond and the multiplayer characters killed. With Frank's help, Hammond manages to take down the wave of obscure soldiers. After that, Frank heads to Barnaby's lab to confront Blackburn in order to force a cure out of her. She's forced to oblige and works with you. We better get started. The treatment lab is through here. I'll guide you through the setup. Unfortunately, I can't enter the chamber myself. What? How stupid do you think I am? The Barnaby radiation in there is off the charts. It would be fatal for me, but it won't affect you. Oh, okay. Following her instructions, you prop up the machine to reverse the infection, I guess. The procedure seems to work. Wait, how is Frank not dying from the radiation, though? Blackburn said she couldn't go in because of that. Oh, whatever. They make a break for it to the helicopter Hammond called for. Everyone escapes, and Frank becomes famous again. Oof. This is, uh... This is not getting better. Oh, but alternate endings are back as well. What are they? Hammond dies and everything sucks, and everyone dies and everything sucks. These endings are barely different. I don't think I need to speak for how bad the story was, and it doesn't have to do with the plot holes, hollow characters, or the exhausted dynamic that is Frank refusing to provide himself in order to advance the research of the zombie virus. Not entirely, at least. It's just that it was boring. Nothing happened. Frank got infected, forced his way to get cured, and leaves. That's it. Again, I have to make a comparison to games by the same company, this time with Case West. The story provided so much to the world and set it up for potential new installments. But for Frank Rising, nothing happened. Tell me something that happened. What, Frank being famous again? Yeah, we totally didn't see that coming a mile away. I honestly thought they were saving the cloning aspect for this particular chapter. I don't know how, but do something with it. Jesus Christ, the writers still aren't trying. As for the rest of the experience, nothing really shines for this chapter. I give them credit for trying to make it completely different from the base game, but the problem is that it isn't fun. We've seen how being a zombie can be fun in other games. Stubbs the Zombie is one of the best examples. Not only did you have inhuman abilities to fight enemies, but you can form small armies through fallen enemies to aid you throughout the game. It was really satisfying and unique to play. There's also Left 4 Dead. While their execution can only be done in a multiplayer aspect, it's still a fantastic example that playing as an acrobatic zombie can be extremely fun. And honestly, Frank Rising could have implemented a fraction of the Hunter's gameplay, but they don't let you leap around freely. It has to be on a target and it has to have this annoying recovery animation. That and the aiming mechanic for it is poorly designed. Something else that prevented this from being an enjoyable experience. Despite being a grunting, hunched, toxic-filled zombie, all zombies still attack you. 
Why did they do this? With even less at your disposal, they're more of a nuisance than ever before. And considering there's absolutely nothing to gain from racking up kills, and it isn't satisfying to kill them as a zombified Frank at all, what's the point? Why couldn't they have you fight larger amounts of soldiers but have a way to use zombies as a small army? Oh, and I hope you like hearing Ty Olsen grunt for an hour and a half. <laughs> Nothing short of a symphony. That's pretty much it. Boring story, boring gameplay. There are a lot of people that enjoyed Dead Rising 4 for what it was, and I can respect that. You're allowed to like whatever you want, but I would honestly be surprised if even those people got any fun out of this DLC chapter. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little extra bit to my overall retrospect on the Dead Rising series. I wanted to make this as a follow up to my long winded analysis on Dead Rising 4. I'm glad so many of you enjoyed my retrospect. I really wanted it to stand out from what so many people were providing. Most of what I seen were either a guy yelling at a camera over TJ Rotolo being replaced, or just making comparisons to Saints Row. I hate the idea of these kinds of opinions standing above all else or having the louder voice. This will make the more meaningful messages we're trying to provide less likely to be heard. Getting rid of Ty Olsen won't make the game magically better. While other videos on the matter were certainly remarkable and shined light in the situation, I wanted mine to really stand out from the rest. I wanted to make a full-fledged, no bullshit, heavily detailed analysis on where Capcom Vancouver went wrong with this series, as well as provide examples from my own experiences. There's at least a few more Dead Rising projects in the future, so be sure to stay tuned for those. 